Hi, everyone. So, um, yeah, my name's Thomas Bell. I'm actually from Florium, but uh, Florium owns Home Learning College, so that's what I'm talking about today. Um, and it's the end of the day, so basically I'm going to show you a load of screenshots. And because of the projector, um, that might be a problem. <laughs> so uh, actually, while I'm going through this, we, we did a site for Christmas, which was, in fact, Christmas is about 270 days away. So if you go your browser out, you can go to christmas.florium.com, and this is basically the same theme, a bit of rebranding. So as I'm going through, play with that. So Florium, um, it's a bit of a hard one to, to explain, but we start partnerships. Um, we sort of incubate them and we make them grow. Um, and some examples of that are Squared Online, which is a partnership with Google, selling uh, digital marketing qualifications. Um, we've got a partnership with CIPD, selling HR courses, L&D courses. Um, uh, we have a partnership with United for Wildlife, which I presented last year. Um, and we've started the Academy of Digital Business Leaders and a subscriptions site called .native. There's a couple of others as well. So, but the main business with most uh, users is Home Learning College. Um, so we've got about 15,000 active students. And Home Learning College is, uh, it, it delivers professional accredited qualifications. So in accounting, um, in bookkeeping, uh, HR, uh, L&D, uh, marketing, and has, a, yeah, has about 15,000 active students. So this is, this is our biggest uh, user base site. Um, and basically what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about uh, a campus refresh, a refocus, a, a taking a step back and really going, okay, well, what's the campus for? I know that sounds like a simple question to ask for, um, but we want to take a step back and go, all right, what are we doing? So it was about halfway through last year, we had the opportunity to, uh, well, we had a, a bit of a time window, really, uh, where we had some developer resource, um, front end and back end. So we took that opportunity and we said, okay, what are we gonna do with this? So that's what I'm gonna talk about. Okay, well, opportunity knocks too, because it's Thursday. So this is what it looked like. Um, and you know what, the, this, the site's pretty good. Can we actually see it? Yes. It's in contrast. So the site's not that bad. Um, the theme we had was uh, a pretty, pretty standard theme, had the standard layout for Moodle, um, rebranded, uh, it's pretty nice. But um, we'd done a few sites last year and the year before that were just, they were visually stunning and we learned a lot doing them. Um, we did a lot of work on sort of the UI and the UX. So it was time to sort of bring this one back. Again, okay, ignore the little squiggles there. Couldn't find many screenshots. But um, a course page, you know, it looks very much like Moodle. Um, yeah, quiz, there we go. So, I'm just going to talk about a few of the sort of the way we went about it, and hopefully that you can maybe apply to your own projects. So the first thing to do was to look at our like, well, make some user stories, looking at our users, not just not just tutors, not just students, but what we did is we went, okay, we've got students, there are the people that are paying, we've got community managers and tutors that interface directly with the students. So any attitude that they have with the campus. <laughs> It's going to go straight to the students. So we, yeah, we split it down into students, tutors, uh, community managers, and learning technologists, because they're also the guys that are dealing with the campus on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we did student surveys, um, student focus groups. Uh, we did the same with tutors. And I, the learning technology team at Florium did a lot of like going around and talking to a lot of the staff members working out what's important. And also they work on all of our sites. They've got a big, uh, they've got a good overview. Um, from that, and we didn't do this perfectly, but from that we uh, created a bunch of user stories. They described the platform that we wanted, that our users wanted. Um, we didn't do it right because we didn't, uh, you, you know, we were supposed to get into a room collaboratively, all these stakeholders. One or two of us did that, so it was a bit, a bit prescriptive. But that's something we're going to do. We'll do better next time. The other thing which was 
which I think was really useful, is just, just taking a step back and going, okay, if, if we, want, we don't want to do like three or four things, pick three or four things that you want your visual design to you know, achieve. And then look back at those as you go through the design process, looking at your drafts, looking at your, um, your wireframes. And we wanted these. So we wanted to uh, have a mobile first design. And by that I mean, when we look at a, a specific context, when we look at a login page or a course page, um, what does a mobile user want, was our question. Like, you're on your mobile, what do you want? Um, and then when we scale it up to um, tablet, why are we adding features, you know? The, the principle was to design for mobile. Uh, contextual consistency, well, that may, may not make sense straight away. But what I mean by that is um, we want a consistency across all of the different contexts so that the user feels comfortable when they go through them. Um, it doesn't mean that they all look exactly the same, but it means the same uh, UI layout is there so that they know they've got fallbacks if they get confused. Um, that's what we call that. Uh, material design, this is uh, Google's material design principles. It's a whole framework. And I'm not going to go into much detail on that. You can Google it and have a look. Um, so we're taking some, some of their core principles. We don't want to create an Android app that looks like a Google app, but we want to take some principles that, that are sensible. And subtlety on the bottom there is just about um, sort of delighting users with subtle things. Um, make, don't need to put loads of flashy things on the site that make it um, maybe visually appealing. Um, for, our, for our users, maybe that wasn't important. It was to put the learning there but have subtle functionality and subtle bits of information that help them. So yeah, um, the next thing we did was, like I was saying, uh, about focus, it's about looking at a context and saying, why is a user here? So you didn't see our old login page, but it was loads of information. It felt a bit like a marketing site, but it wasn't a marketing, marketing site. You were there to log in. That was the only reason why uh, you were there. So what we did was the primary action here was to log in. <laughs> uh, so we, it seems simple, but we did that. And also the other action is if you are lost, you need to be able to call our student services and you know, ask for help. Um, secondary actions went into the drawer, which is that hamburger menu. And you'll see that on another slide in a second. Um, so another context, we're asking the same questions. Why is a mobile user here? And the main thing that came out of the feedback was they just want to get on with their learning. They've logged in and they want to get straight into their learning. Um, they also want to see like, where they're at in their program and continue off where they left off. So what we've got here is a regime button where, which we developed. So when you click that, it just takes you to the last thing you touched, just simply the last thing you touched when you were last logged out. Um, and also we've got uh, progress indicators with next step buttons. Um, uh, next to your course. So you can have a look where your progress is at, and then you can go and uh, jump in where you left off. The secondary navigation here is this draw feature, and this is where this is where all our Moodle blocks go. So actually on the main bit, we don't have any blocks. Um, like the dashboard's a bit different because it's all blocks. But this is where secondary information goes. So in here we've got resources, policies, logouts there, because you only need that when you're sort of finished. Um, and other box go there. So another big thing is the course format, obviously. Um, how's the contrast on this? Hey, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. So um, we, div we developed a course format uh, last year. Um, and I would, if you, I'm not going to explain it here. Um, it does break the concept of a course format down a bit. Um, but what it basically provides, and go and read those articles um, for more detailed information. But what it does is it breaks it down so that we can choose uh, a layout for sections. So in this case, we've got a collapsed topics, which we've seen quite a lot. And inside there, we can choose um, various different layouts. So here you can see a grid layout with some labels uh, inside the collapsed topics. Um, and here's the same course format, but we've chosen to show tabs off. And we've chosen you know, the core Moodle list sort of uh, layout. So we can combine those as well. It's, it's a funky look. Go and have a read of that. Be quite, quite good. Uh, the other thing we did was we said, OK, um, and this is really important because it, it sort of focuses you in. Choose a set of activities that you really want to change, that you really want to make really good. 
Um, so the ones that you use the most, maybe. And then for the others, just uh, well, make sure they look good still, because you don't want to give a tool to your tutors or your learning technologist that is, well, not suitable or buggy. Or... So yeah, we chose, it wasn't actually small. It was about 10 to 15 activities we wanted to style a lot. Um, I'm just going to show you a few of those. So with book, we wanted to actually make it kind of a delight to read. So like you would go onto your Kindle and you, you could sit there for hours. We wanted the same sort of thing here. So we've, we just designed it with the typography in mind and the sort of no distractions. Um, and this is the book module here. Oh, the on-demand on navigation there is this, uh, it's the same, you know, it's just, it's just styling. So it's the same book module and core. But what we've done is we've made the navigation, when you start scrolling up, like to suggest that you want to go to the top, <laughs> uh, the navigation appears for you. So it's a bit like when you're on your Chrome browser on your mobile and the navigation appears. Uh, forums, okay, this, this is just a bit of, this is fairly normal styling for the forum. This is, this is probably one of those minor activities. Um, it fits in with the brand. Uh, quiz we did, we focused on quite a bit. So we're thinking about, okay, I'm on a mobile and I've got big thumbs. So um, what I want to do is I want to be able to sort of smash the screen with my fist um, to choose. Um, but really, what, it, it's just reordering it. The, the draw here, I haven't got a screenshot, but the draw will give you um, the quiz navigation and it will show you the flags. So if you flag things here, it's going to give you a nice flag. Um, yeah, I haven't got any more, more screenshots. Yay. So the key things for me were choose some design principles, like how you want to focus in on the visual design. Um, and that's going to be different for everyone, but you know, pick those. Work with your graphic designers to do that. Um, work with your different users. Come up with user stories. Hopefully work together to make them. What's important for your, the, the, your platform. Um, and then look at each page that you want to focus on, the different contexts, and choose, you know, well, it, for us it was mobile first, but for you, choose what 80% of the people are going to be doing. And it was really for us, it was don't give them too much choice, give them what most people would want. Um, with that, those secondary actions, we obviously put that in the drawer, and people could go search for that. Because it was consistent, like, because if they'd fail to find what they want on the main bit of the page, they, users, our users always know to go to the draw. Um, that's, the, that's where they go after that. Um, and then drill down your key activities. So that's just really focused on a, a, a small a set. It doesn't have to be small, but a set of activities. 80%. Um, yeah. Um, that's a question. Sorry. Thank you, Thomas. No worries.